Hello peeps. Right, a friend of mine's dropped a set of pair of barrels off for a um, Harley Davidson 1340 Evo. I don't know a lot about Harley Davidsons. Um, and they want to reboard. Uh, got some fancy higher compression Wisco pistons for it. 20 thou over from standard, uh, which is about half a mil. So, yeah, we're going to reboard these barrels. Did a little bit investigating before I went ahead with it because I've never done uh, Harley barrels before. Um, and uh, more importantly, uh, boring these types of barrel on the 1340 Evos. Now, I did find some information that you have to torque the barrels down while boring them, basically because it, when you uh, bolt the barrel down on the engine, it actually slightly distorts. So we've got to mimic that when we're boring it. So what we're doing is when we're boring it, we're actually boring it with that torque value or torque within that barrel. So I came across these, well, the guy that dropped the barrels off came across uh, or got, got hold of these clamping plates for me and I must make some up myself, get uh, knocks them out on the milling machine and the lathe. And basically what that is, is uh, two huge great big end plates held together through the through the bolt holes through the barrel great big allen bolts and you sandwich them sandwich the barrel in between them and torque these up to the required torque there are, is a torque procedure for bolting the heads down on those 1340s I think it's about 7 foot pounds and then 14 and then you do it at 90 degrees which equates to around about 33 foot pounds torque on the head so rather than do the 90 degrees on each of these I just pulled it down to well the three three stages 7, 14 and then up to about 33 the only reason why I did it that way without doing it at 90 degrees is because these bolts are different from OE bolts and it might give you a different torque as long as you get a good even pressure on there relating to it approximately what would be on the bike when it's bolted together so okay what we're going to do is go down to the workshop set it all up on the um, boring bar on the boring table and bore these out to, to take these pistons it has supplied some instructions with it or some installation instructions um, and it requires two to two and a half thou clearance piston clearance so we'll go down there and set it up on the boring bar, set it within one and a half thou of the final finish, one to one and a half thou, and then take the last thousandths of an inch out by a honing technique, and I'll show you how we do that. Right, then in the workshop we go. The bar secured underneath the boring table, uh, complete with the um, clamp plates, and the cylinder is inverted. So we're boring from the bottom of the barrel upwards. Okay, so now we need to centralise the boring shaft over the bore. So this is achieved by these three prongs. There's another one on the other side. Let me show you that. Now what happens is when you turn the nut on the top clockwise, you might be able to see that these prongs come out. I mean, they go slowly, so you probably won't be able to see it. So what we need to do is just wind the boring shaft of the bar down into the bore. So it's just at the bottom of the bottom of the sleeve, or at the top, because it's upside down. But tighten the nut up. And you'll just about see as I tighten it up. No, probably won't slacken the, slacken the boring bar off a bit. As you tighten it up, those three prongs come out and touch the side. Just rotate it slightly. So now that boring shaft is centered to the bore. So we pinch the 
clamp bolt up. So I'll just, just slacken it off. And then I run run it to the top of the bore or down to the bottom as it's upside down. Almost there. Get to the bottom. And then usually what can happen, tighten, tighten the nut back on the top so it brings the prongs back out and you just about see the woman touching the side there. And if we slacken this off again, and then just tighten the nut up, and if you get any more, if you can tighten the nut up any more, it means that the shaft or the barrel isn't square or at 90 degrees to the table. Okay, the phone's ringing now, so I better answer that. What we do is wind it, wind it back up the bore. Okay, I'm bring the tool around at the front and we can undo those centralising or we'll slacken them off and then they automatically go back in again out the way. Leave them in there otherwise the, the swarf and all that gets in there. Okay, so we need, to, we need to set that tool up to the required cutting depth. I might take two cuts on it, take one cut just to see what it comes up like and then take a final cut within within the thou and then we'll hone you the last thou out. Right, I measured the piston and the diameter at the skirt at 90 degrees to the gudgeon pin is 3 inches 515 and a half thou so with a 25 thou clearance the bore will need to be 3.5180 so we'll cut it to 3.5165, that will give us one to one and a half though, uh, honing, which will give us about 25, uh, sorry, yeah, 25 though, two and a half though, sorry, no, I don't want 25 though, two and a half though clearance. Um, the Instruction seat sheet says two to two and a half thou clearance. Right, so here we have the micrometer for the boring bar. And basically what it does it sets the, the tool distance from the center. The cutting tip is there. So we place that into position. And I'm gonna cut it. First cut's gonna be ten thou less than what we need. I've already worked out what the diameter of the bore already is and it's coming up as three and a half inches so I'm going to go to, we've got to cut it to 3.5165 so, so I'll cut it to 3.5165 Zero seven. First of all, so what we do is we adjust this screw on here, which will it's like a thread in there that brings the tool out and turn it clockwise. Five, six, seven on the micrometer there. Just rotate it a little bit and tighten the tool up. Lock it in place 
and check again. Seven. Three point five zero seven. Well, thereabouts enough to be dead accurate because that, that isn't the final cut anyway. Just to see what finish we get anyway, and then we'll go another eight or nine tenth out. Take it the final cut, and then we'll hone it. Now we're ready to start the cutting. I set the uh, the depth rod, so when that plunges down, that'll hit on top of there and knock the kill switch off when it reaches the bottom of the bore, so it's an automatic cut off. Right, so let's uh, turn it on. And feed it down gently. Certainly got it. So we'll leave it 15 odd minutes and done the first cut. Just coming to the end now and it should click off. There you go. Right, so the verniers are, I've remeasured the piston and that's what the piston diameter is. 3.5155 Now I need to set a bore gauge to zero on that reading there um, So what I'm going to do is put the bore, put the verniers on there and we got this little probe here whether you can see it or not that push, when I push on that that moves the needle on there and that will centralise on the bore when I go to measure in a minute, I'll show you. So what I do is I close that up. Put that on there. And then I'll move the camera up to the gauge. It's a bit difficult, I need about four hands with this. So it's just hitting the zero mark there. Probably one tenth of a thousandth of an inch over. So now I'll stick it in the bore and measure what the bore is. Okay, put the bore gauge in it just to see what that cut is. I know the clock ain't very good, but we're about about tenth hour under at the moment of where we want to be. So I reckon if we cut out about another eight thou, eight or nine thou, then we can, as I said before, just last hone the last bit out. So we'll do a final fine cut on it. The light's not very good now. It's uh, about eleven o'clock at night. Okay, for the final cut, I've uh, adjusted the tool and set it on the micrometer. So the required setting that will give us about one thou home remaining. There we go. The final cut's been done and we'll just measure it on the bore gauge. Again, I don't know whether you can read it or not. But we're just about just a thousandth of an inch. over so that gives us about one and a half thou one to one and a half thou honing excellent job okay remove the barrel from the bore and bar table now and now I've got it set up on my honing stand so I can hone it out with the honing tool We'll get a few strokes, see what it comes out like, and then give it another measurement.
Let me just check see what finish we've got on there. I just need a little bit more okay we've got the dial gauge in there for the last time and I don't know whether you can see or not we've got just over two thousand clearance on there and I've checked it at all different points in the bore so that's between two and two and a half thousand clearance on that for the piston clearance okay job done right back in the office right that was a job well done in fact I measured the, well when I measured the pistons the they were identical size down to half a thousandth of an inch exactly the same so uh, yeah both bore sizes are the same and you can see that's a nice snug fit in there and in there Two to two and a half day clearance. Right, these are the sandwich plates. That's the uh, one that goes on the head because it's got the two dowels for the locating dowels. And there's the other one that goes on the bottom on the skirt end. The two rotary bolts. So yeah, good job you provided them because I wouldn't have been able to do a good job. Some people bore these in the lay. They've seen. Um, on some uh, American sites that people do in the lathe, you know, some people do it different ways than others on boring them. Everybody to their own. My philosophy: as long as you reach the objective, no matter how you do it. So yeah, great stuff. So 1340 Evo reboard, ready to go back to the customer. Uh, I'll get him to gap the rings, uh, follow the instructions on the sheet. Uh, it does give you information on it, gap in the rings, um, they said they can do that, so um, by the way after, quite importantly after you do rebores and honing, especially the honing, always wash the bores out in soapy water, hot soapy water, because the grit from the stones get embedded in the small tiny grooves within the cylinder wall on the honing technique. Uh, washing it out with degreaser simply won't get rid of it, so you need to really get it clean with some detergent, you know, washing powder, that sort of thing, with hot water. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching my video. Uh, I'll get another one up together somewhere. Uh, I've got plenty to get on with. Uh, always doing something down in the workshop, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again sometime.